All right, we are live. Hi, everyone. We're going to give uh, everybody just a couple of minutes to hop on our alumni lunch and learn uh, and we will get started shortly. Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us for our next NCTC alumni lunch and learn series. Uh, we are really excited today. Um, We've been bringing you these for a couple weeks, a couple months now, um, and today we have an exciting presentation. Uh, so I hope you grabbed your lunch and let me introduce Michelle Harvey, who will introduce today's guests. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us during your lunch. As Liz mentioned, my name is Michelle Harvey. I'm the development, development coordinator here at NCTC. Before I introduce our presenters, I wanted to share more about the Alumni Association here at NCTC. For anyone that has ever attended NCTC, even if you did not graduate with a degree or certificate, you have the opportunity to join the Alumni Association and your first year is free on us. You have the opportunity to receive special invitations of on-campus events, access to the NCTC library, discounted tickets to NCTC musical and theater productions, guidance from our career services, and you'll receive an NCTC alumni t-shirt. We are just now returning back to campus, so please be patient with us as we uh, prepare those orders for your t-shirt. You can also join by signing up on our website at nctc.edu slash alumni. We are looking forward to connecting with you all. Now we'd like to introduce our speakers for today. Joining us are some amazing HR professionals that have years of experience in navigating the human resources world. Joining us today is Dr. Goodwin. Dr. Goodwin launched her career, HR career as a recruiter in the gaming industry, worked as a benefits administrator for a global construction company before spending 10 years with a top Fortune 500 global healthcare supply chain organization and excels in her current position as the HR senior manager at Samsung HVAC. With over 20 years of experience, she navigated the regional, national, and international stage, and she counts among her greatest accomplishments, mentoring others while also advocating on, on their behalf. Dr. Gowen recently earned a doctorate from Abilene Christian University, where she studied organizational leadership. She received a Master of Science in Human Resources Management from Keller, Keller Graduate School of Management of DeVry University, and a Bachelor's of Science in Business Operations for DeVry Institute of Technology. She is also an active member of the Alliance Texas HR Group, Society for Human Resource Management, Dallas HR, and the Workforce Solutions of North Central Texas Council of Governments Board. Also, okay. no problem. Great accomplishments. I'm so happy to have you here with us. Joining us as well is Ed Mita. Edward has over 54 years of corporate man, of public, public and private sector management experience with Fortune 500 companies, federal and state organizations, and contract consulting. Areas of expertise include human resource management, supply chain and retail, retail operates, operations, education and sales marketing. And to, in spring 2015, he assigned to assist the, in the development and deployment of a BA BS program in human resource management. During the last five months, he has he has assembled a program that is eligible for 
SHRM certified, including the design and development of six new courses to be offered at the University of Texas in Dallas. Well, at Dallas. In 2015, he developed, he designed and developed two courses, including leading change and training and development. Edward worked as a senior manager in operations risk management practice for KPMG LLP, a big four professional service organization. Responsibilities included sales, project management, national learning and development, senior manager, engagement manager, business development manager, and project manager. Core accountabilities included improving, um, approving and coordinating KPMG's methodologies for delivery of business process improvement, human resource recommendations, and developing tools for business measure business measurement and monitoring. Thank you for joining us, Ed. Also joining us is Jessica Machado. Jessica is originally from Brazil and has been with PACCAR Peterbilt, a leader in the truck manufacturing for over eight years. She has a BS in psychology, became a specialist in, learn in lean manufacturing engineering, and completed her MS in management strategy and leadership at Michigan State University. She has over 10 years of experience in HR, working on a global project leading teams across South America, Europe, and for the past four years in the United States. In her current role, she is responsible for human resources at Peterbilt Division, supporting leadership and organization's goals. Thank you for joining, Jessica. All right, well, we're gonna get started, All right? Um, if I'm gonna start with Jessica. Could you provide a br uh, brief presentation of your current role as HR manager? Sure. Thanks for for having us. It's a pleasure to be representing Peterbilt in here. Uh, so Peterbilt Motors is a truck manufacturer that is established in the area of Denton. So in the area of Denton, we have both what we call our, our plant where we actually build the trucks and also uh, the division office, which is what you could consider our headquarters. And I say that because we're actually part of a bigger company called PACAR, which headquarters is actually in uh, up in Washington state. Uh, but, to, but to keep it to a world in Peterbilt, uh, my, uh, my role is to be a job manager for the division side, which is where we, we sit and serve all of our engineers. We have over 300 engineers uh, working on our, on our truck and technology, um, all the part of, of sales, uh, accounting. So that's that's the group that some oh, over 600 employees uh, that are supporting the business, including our our vice president, including our our general managers and our assistant general manager, our executive group. So uh, me with my wonderful team, I have a team of of six people who help me uh, support and provide all HR services from uh, recruiting, from mentoring, from succession planning, from development. Uh, so we help our organization, uh, especially during these difficult times, I'll say our role has became, um, uh, ha has gained a lot of attention, <laughs> if anything. Um, but this is a, a little bit of what we do, uh, providing HR services to, to this group within Peterbilt Motors. Great, Dr. Goodwin. Uh, thank you again for allowing me this opportunity to participate. I'm very eager to share my uh, wealth of knowledge with everyone. Uh, currently, I am with Samsung HVAC. We are the North America arm of the air conditioning division of Samsung. And yes, Samsung does manufacture and sell air conditioning units. Um, however, it is more aligned with the ductless AC units that are very trendy and progressive and energy efficient that individuals are looking for right now. Um, I currently lead all of the HR functional areas for our organization, and we are a growing organization where I was employee number 15. I've been with the organization since uh, 2014, December of 2014, shortly after 
um, Samsung acquired a small business and we've grown exponentially since then and we continue to grow. We're located in the Roanoke, Texas area and we are wholly owned by Samsung. So we are a part of the Samsung uh, conglomerate and family. Thank you for sharing. All right, Ed, could you tell us about your current role at University of Texas at Dallas? Thank you very much, by the way, for the invitation. I okay, appreciate it. <laughs> um, I've been at uh, UT Dallas now for six years. Um, I retired from California State University, Chico. Uh, I taught there the balance of time to get a retirement out of it. I taught when I went to grad school. Um, I was a reentry student, went back to school in 1989, uh, earned my bachelor's in human resource management, an MBA. And then I taught for a couple years at the university, and then I got a real job and uh, went in out into um, basically sales and then evolved into consulting. I landed with KPMG when they had KPMG Consulting. From there, it morphed into Bearing Point, which was uh, a public company. KPMG started up at a practice called Advisory, which was uh, the code word for consulting again, went back with them, finished my career eight years and retired. Really, it was uh, I show 2011 because he let me go until January 3rd, so that I'd get my full pension uh, additions, et cetera. Uh, didn't think I was going to do anything else starting in 2011. And my alma mater called me here in Dallas, said, come and teach. So I said, sure, I'll come out for a semester. Um, now we're about 10 years past that. Uh, I finished up four years there, came to UT and uh, went in in sales and marketing. Uh, the Dean, Dean Prakul was looking for uh, an HR program. Um, Jeff Weekly, Professor Weekly from uh, SMU came over and with David Ritchie and myself and Jeff, we put together the uh, Bachelors of Science for Human Resource Management. So. Uh, it's been a, it's really been a fun trip and uh, love HR. Uh, I've had, you know, a number of careers. Uh, so I was funny. I was laughing when I was reading through the, the different questions. I haven't actually interviewed for a job in 23 years. Wow. I've always been on the other side of the desk. So hopefully I can provide some insight, a uh, very candid insight as far as what uh, what the hiring managers are looking for versus what the recruiters are looking for. Great. Well, thank you for joining us. All right, let's get started. Um, what are desired? What are the desired soft skills employers are currently looking for? We often hear this term a lot in career guidance, and I know it's a range of different aspects. But I want to hear from the professionals. Um, feel free to jump in. Well, I'll, I'll take the lead on that, Michelle. I think what's important right now, especially in the world we live in today, is that you have decision-making and good judgment skills that align with the company's philosophy on how they treat individuals and their core values. You know, take a minute. If you're interested in the organization, learn what their values are and then recognize if that's the type of organization in which you want to work. And when you are there, govern yourself accordingly, be able to make decisions according to those values. So don't just use them to gain the opportunity, but let them be a part of your living experience while engaged with that organization. And I would think a major um, thing that individuals are needing to really zone in on right now would be conflict management skills. And that's not just knowing your conflict management style, but also knowing how to interact and engage with other individuals that are different from you when conflict does arise. And I would say lastly, the most important thing that I would think someone would need to be able to drive home is the ability to have cross-functional collaboration, especially with individuals that are different from you. 
We all come from different backgrounds. We all experience different things in the workplace. But if we're going to win, we have to do so together. And if you aren't willing and ready and able to collaborate with others who are different from you, then um, it will make that a lot more challenging for us. So those are the three things that I think are very critical right now as individuals go out and look for new opportunities. Thank you, Dr. Goodwin, for sharing. Jessica, Ed, do you have any additional opinions or? Uh, one thing that came to my mind when was uh, I read the question definitely has to do with with the context where we're all in right now, and it has to do with adaptability, uh, the, the ability to uh, handle challenges and being willing to, to adjust to multiple demands. Uh, we're all in, in scenarios. Obviously, each business felt that the current um, crisis and pandemic in different ways, uh, but some of us have felt that in business downsizing and layoffs, that might mean taking more responsibilities that might mean doing more than you're used to do. So uh, that adaptability, that ability to learn on the go, right? At least for me as an HR professional, I had never been to a, through a pandemic before. So we were literally learning on action, like each day, day by day. We've never been through this before. What's the handbook? Oh, we have to write the handbook because there's no handbook about it. So uh, that ability to to react and obviously uh, uh, considering everything that uh, Dr. Goodwin just pointed out, why you do that, making good decisions and considering the core values of your company is so important. Um, but I would I would add that adaptability, especially right now, is something that we all are are are, are challenged to to stretch and really learn. I definitely agree. Same thing with higher education is literally a day by day learning basis. I know Liz and I are <laughs> continuously like, okay, what's next? <laughs> But um, everyone is being very collaborative, and I agree, Dr. Goodwin, that is something that you definitely have to in these trying times. All right, Ed, do you have anything? Sure. That you well, Jessica, Jessica stole one right off my list. In <laughs> fact, adaptability in today's environment is absolutely critical. I spent a lot of time with my students, and especially in the last 10 years, coaching and mentoring them on, you know, how to go through an interview and, and what is the employer really looking for? Um, adaptability is one. Another one that's very similar is agreeability. Okay, and one of the coaching tips I give is that the minute that you say no in an interview, you've ended the interview, uh, i.e., will you relocate? Well, you know, students say, well, I, I want to stay in Dallas. I said, no, no, sure. I'll, you know, I'm open to relocation as I try to explain. That doesn't mean that they're going to offer you Minnesota and you're going to go, okay? It means, sure, I'm open. But in many cases, especially uh, like Jessica's business and in, in uh, Dr. Goodwin's business, you you need to move. And by saying no, you've just cut your opportunities off. So those would be two. Another one I'm looking for, especially in today, we talk about creativity and innovation. I Put those together and call it risk taking. Don't be afraid to take a risk. Okay. And I think that's what I want. And I'll finish by saying that we go through the interviews and of course they're scripted. And then as a hiring manager, we ask that, that question, do you have any questions for me? And, you know, 30, 40, 50% of the time, nope, nope, I've done my research. I know everything about it. No, no. The ball has just changed hands. We've gone from defense to offense. First question you're going to ask is, tell me about the career path. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, as, as the hiring manager, I've got to sell you. I've got to make, I've got to make the effort to show you that, that you have a place here. Okay. So you start creating the fit. And then finally, any other questions? And one of my favorites, tell me about the training. That's a commitment to the company, one that HR and the hiring manager are willing to make the investment. That would be my advice. 
thank you for sharing that actually made me want to ask you all the question as well. What are some good questions that interviewees can ask that will set them apart? Because I know that is something very tricky, like going through the interview process, because they're constantly probably just thinking about the questions that you're asking them versus what to ask you. Dr. Goodwin, could you mind sharing a few that you may have? Sure. Um, my mind is racing on many different good questions. I think uh, one of the things that would really help an applicant is to understand what are the key priorities that this particular selected candidate would need to tackle within their first 90 days of employment. And then listen attentively for the response mm -hmm. and follow up with examples of how you have um, actually executed similar task to show that you will be able to hit the ground running if given this opportunity to join the organization. Perfect. Jessica, do you have any questions that you think will set them apart as well? Or questions they need to ask? <laughs> yeah, I, I like the question. I definitely love the what is going to be my biggest challenge, right? Coming in next in nine days as, as Dr. Goodman shared. Another one that I like because uh, I think it makes it um, personal and given give a, a an opportunity for you to get to know the company is like why do you like working here? That's a question that makes um, you assess some of the core values that we also just mentioned, right? What is what does make it this a good company to work for? I always say the interviewing process is a two way street. The company is interviewing you, but you should also be interviewing that company to figure it out if that's the place you want to be part of. That's what makes the match work. It has to work for both sides. So I like I like when when candidates are interested in what is really this company. So thank you for sharing. Um, let's see. I want to go back to discussing desired soft skills. How can a applicant, well, a candidate describe their desired soft skills during an interview and provide examples as well? Um, feel free to jump in. Well, I, I think one of the, a couple of things that I look at would be in that situation is confidence versus arrogance. Okay, coming in confident, having excellent listening skills, knowing that don't sell after the close, so to speak. When, the, when you are going through an interview and you get the head nod and the agreement, it may be time to pull back. Also, future looking, okay? In other words, not about, I'm, I'm looking for a career kind of questions, not that one per, per se, but I'm not looking for a job, I'm looking for a career. And that can be the phraseology that you're using, very, very important. And then, you know, it doesn't hurt, uh, the, the it doesn't hurt to make sure that you're matching the dresses. I say with, with the recruiters, I said, they're not the ones that are interviewing you and hiring you. They're the ones that are putting the beans in the jar for the hiring managers to interview. And I say that, you know, ask the recruiter anything you want to know. How should I dress? Tell me a little bit about who I'm going to be interviewing with, what their likes and dislikes are. That is definitely going to give you an upper hand and try to make a connection or connections through, say, LinkedIn with people in the company, they'll help you out. And then last but not least, especially in the college level, go ahead and uh, look at, uh, you know, the, uh, what do I want to call it? Backdoor, not backdoor. Um, help me out here. Um, it's part of getting old. Um, but anyway, the, um, you know, people that have interviewed, they go ahead and put that information online. And generally speaking, that's fairly accurate. Oh, are you referring to Glassdoor? Glassdoor, yeah, there okay. you go. Okay. You know, I, it's, it's a door. I got half of it. It's pretty it's good. okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, those are the things that, that I do. And I, there's a lot of ways to get in uh, the back door. And that's what I teach with LinkedIn, et cetera. Dr. Goodwin, Jessica, do you have any uh, thoughts to share about what how a candidate could describe their soft skills? Uh, I, I'll, I'll say that 
A candidate really needs to be able to respond with competency-based responses mm -hmm. to the questions. And, you know, that's best done by utilizing the STAR model. The STAR model talks about the situation or task, the specific actions that you've taken, and then what positive results that came out of that situation. And I stress positive because I've had applicants, you know, tell me about a great situation and then the results were negative. Now, that's that's not all bad, but, you know, think about it, you know, do you want to share with me something great that you've accomplished? Or do you want to share with me where you've, you've missed out? And so listen attentively to the question, think about some skills that you bring, and then give those specific um, situations or competency-based responses to show that you're capable and qualified to step right into that role and be successful. Thank you. Jessica, do you have anything to add? No, I think that's what I had is it's, tell me a story. When I when I am trying to get a, a star answer from my candidates and they won't give me, I was like, just tell me a story. Tell me a time when something happened. Tell me that I was walking on the street and this happened and this is my reaction and here's the result. And maybe there will be a, a bad result, Dr. Goodwin. Maybe I'm looking, learning from mistakes, right? <laughs> I'm looking for for skills. How do I uh, my capability of learn from my mistakes? Maybe there's going to be a bad result, but here's how I react to it. Here's how I dealt with the situation. Right. The more specific uh, examples, reality case you can bring to the table, the more credibility you're going to bring, and the more um, more accurate the measurement of the skill is going to be for whoever is trying to assess it. And so I would highly encourage. Have a list of stories uh, when you're preparing for an interview and pick them as you see they fit according to the, the question that is being made. But bringing real life examples is how you actually show a demonstrated skill. I agree. Okay, um, this question is geared towards more Dr. Goodwin and Jessica. What are the desired hard skills needed for employment at your businesses? Jessica, or Dr. Yeah, Dr. I, I think I, I named a few. I think more recently, uh, a few of the hard skills we've been looking for is, is data analytics. Data analytics, it's, it's something that we're really looking uh, forward. It, it's relatively new in the market, uh, but more and more industries, the tech industry has been working on it for years, but now you see how all industries have the need to really um, have that skill on, on the table. Uh, another one that has to do directly with the type of business we are in is uh, electrical engineering is something that we're always looking for. Obviously, with, with, with trucks, tr trucks go into different uh, types of energy. We're looking into electrical very hardly. Uh, and another one um, that we really look hard to, to get and even develop, we have programs in the community to develop uh, is truck technicians, a uh, technician that works in our dealers, that works in different garages, that's going to work eventually in our plant too. Those are very hard to find and they are precious skills nowadays. Um, and those don't necessarily, uh, most of the cases don't require a degree or anything, but it's the real technical skill of understanding uh, the works of our uh, of our truck. So that's that's what we're looking for today, the, the hot skills in our market. Thank you. Dr. Goodwin, what are the desired hard skills at Samsung HVAC? HVAC? Sure. Um, we are primarily a sales and HVAC technical services organization. And so we are primarily looking for people who have great customer relationship management skills. And that's not just with your external customers, but internal customers as well, because we have to work very cohesively together to make sure that our external customers are satisfied and receive the product according to their specifications. 
then we're also just like Jessica, we're looking for subject matter proficiency in your field. If you are a HVAC te technician, then you know be a subject matter expert about that. Be able to understand the ins and outs of not only the items that you've studied on, but the current trends in the industry as well. And you know, let's not forget about Microsoft Office. No matter what role you're in, you're going to have to at some point do a PowerPoint presentation, create an Excel spreadsheet, you know, write a, a something report or what have you. So let's make sure that you focus on understanding and, and knowing those skill sets as well that go along with Microsoft Office. And I think, you know, understanding those three components definitely will make you a competitive individual for our organization. Thank you for sharing. Um, let's see. Ed, this question is geared towards you. Any suggestions of classes students should take to help them with their soft skills or helpful websites and resources that you um, that you could share to our listeners? Sure. Um, not knowing the uh, academic structure of all the universities, uh, two of the courses that we offer, one is organizational behavior, which uh, basically focuses a lot, it's similar to HR, but the focus is stronger in sociology, psychology, anthropology, et cetera. So more of the historic part or the intro to HR, which we've added to um, our curriculum, which we did three, four years ago, I guess now. And um, I, I think either very, very important to understand how an organization works and to understand the differences of the organization. And one's going to surprise you a little bit, um, and uh, that's sales. Now, people go, oh, I don't like sales. I'm not a marketing person or whatever. What sales does, and in, in our, you know, at uh, UT Dallas, um, it actually gets you out of your shell. It learns you, it, 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 you learn how to present yourself in front of somebody you get, it knocks that edge off as far as being afraid of people um, because you don't have a choice. So our students go through a semester of training and then we put them through a competition as part of the course called Rookie Preview. And it's amazing. Um, I'm sure that Dr. Goodwin's seen some of them come out of these programs, professional sales and definitely a different person. I can tell you then that in the uh, six years that I've been at UT, we now have people that have moved into senior VP levels, uh, including with a um, uh, lot of different companies, uh, HPE, um, the uh, Lenox. Lenox is right off of our campus, which I'm sure Dr. Goodwin's familiar with. And, um, you know, the so the sales part, I think, is really, really important. Most people... Most students are going to go, eh, I don't know. But uh, after teaching it for a few years here and also in California State University, Chico, I know it is a huge help for people in the job market. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Okay. What are the best practices? Well, what are best practices to explain gaps in resumes during an interview? Because I know during this time, that's probably a reoccurrence. They may have been laid off at the beginning of the year. It may just landed an interview in the past few days or weeks. Um, Jessica, do you mind starting? Yeah, absolutely not. I think my my take in any type of um, interview will always be honesty and transparency. Obviously, you don't have to expose any personal situations, but maybe it will be I had a, a personal family situation and I decided it was the best for me to stay out of the market for two years. And now I'm trying that. Now, now I'm, I'm working my way back. Or I was laid off due to COVID, which is unfortunately very common in the world right now. I think the more um, open, again, without revealing any details unnecessarily, the more open and transparent you are, the, the better you will look and the situation will flow. Dr. Goldwyn? Um, I agree with Jessica on that you must be honest and tell the truth. But I will also add that during that 
moment of um, a break or a gap that you have, you also want to show some of the things that you've been doing to keep your skill set current, even if it's just um, making sure that you've read some sort of um, industry literature and or attended some organizations um, events. I mean, I know we're not doing that right now, but there may be some Zoom meeting or Skype something, or you obtain an additional certification or something. So if you can tell the truth and then show that you've been current with the industry during that moment of break, I think that would be very advantageous mm -hmm. for you. Thank you. Ed, do you have anything to share as well? You know, they said it perfectly. It's the truth. Tell the truth. And I'll tell you, if you're creative and innovative, you can take that. And when I say innovative, I don't mean spinning it. I mean, tell the story. Because if I'm, I want to see how you fit with our company and uh, most companies that I've worked with in my career, and, and I'm old now, storytelling is very, very important. And, um, you know, with KPMG, we were well over 100 and when I was with them, 105, 108 years old. And the uh, anthropology of the corporation, very, very important. And we were storytellers. We're storytellers when we go out as consultants. So um, take, to me, a break in employment is an opportunity to be real, but you have to tell the truth. I agree. It's okay. Well, let's see. What are the top five characteristics that will differentiate a top talent applicant from the rest? I know we touched on that throughout the session, but let's, I want to see if you have any additional thoughts on that. Um, Dr. Goodwin, do you mind sharing your top five characteristics? Sure. Um, I can, I can add a couple of things um, in addition to the things that I've already shared, but um, verbal and nonverbal communication is very important. You know, sometimes it's not what you say that speaks louder than, you know, how you act or the things that you do. So be mindful of your verbal and nonverbal communication, as well as negotiation skills. You know, everyone always is going to have to review a contract, analyze something, be able to collaborate with uh, someone else in your organization, be able to negotiate and, you know, obtain the best possible scenario for the team, the organization, or, you know, your client, whichever it is that you're negotiating on behalf of. And I would say, you know, I cannot stress enough, again, being able to be open-minded enough to have diversity of thought within your organization and, and to be receptive of that. You're not going to agree. You're not going to like. You're not going to um, align wholeheartedly with everyone in your organization or the vision that your leader may be wanting to take you. But keep an open mind and be adaptable, as Ed mentioned earlier. Be flexible and be willing to um, move forward as one unit so that um, whether or not you agree or not, once the decision has been made, you're able to move forward and unify your thoughts and actions along with the greater good of the organization. Thank you. Jessica? Yeah, I, 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 one of the things that I always uh, get caught on, on candidates is actually the, in the interview, it's very clear and easily to, to uh, pass how much you want to work for that company. So that desire of, hey, I really want to do this. I, I, I'm so looking forward to uh, talk to you or get to know you. I've been uh, researching the company. All those are indications that tell me that the person has this drive, right? And, and that will definitely make a difference because maybe you have equally qualified candidates, but one of them uh, really research the company and show high interest. I have called candidates where I call and say, hey, I'm from Peterbilt, you apply for my job. And they say, uh, what, Peterbilt, what's that? I'm like, you, didn't, you don't even research the company you, you want to you apply for. So I know that's kind of basic, but still, um, you should know the company you're applying for. You should uh, have and, and show that desire, uh, the, the willingness willingness to learn. As Dr. Will, Dr. Goodwill mentioned, 
um, ability to communicate. So be prepared, prepare your questions in advance, um, and obviously drive for results and impro improvement, right? What, what can be done better? How can I contribute? Right? What do I bring to the table? What the value, what is the value that I'm going to add to the organization are also uh, things that if you prepare in advance, know your, your examples, your star answers, uh, you show and you obviously um, shine as, as a candidate. Okay, perfect. Well, Liz said we have a question for um, from the live from our live stream, um, but I'm going to ask Ed to provide his characteristics as well. Ed, do you mind sharing? Well, uh, we've covered most of them. One of the things that I always look for is I don't want to hear anything negative. I don't want to hear don't, can't, won't. I don't want to hear negative, absolutely anything negative about a candidate. I also, um, I look for that person, well, example, in, with KPMG when we were in re interviewing, especially new college hires coming into consulting, I had a real simple question. Tell me what consulting is. And I will tell you, if you go out and ask a candidate, especially a new college hire, to explain what consulting is, 90% uh, cannot do it. So uh, the ones that can and understand, and there's really the, the simple answer, and I'll give it away. All consulting is is a gap analysis and a process. You know, current state, future state, gap, and how we're going to get there. That's consulting. Not many times I would hear the answer of being the smartest person in the room and knowing all about this. Guess what? I, I am horrible in finance. And I was on consulting projects that were finance based. So understanding the skills as a consultant, but that, that would be all I could add, you know, the rest of it, we pretty much covered. Thank you. Liz, um, what was the question from our live stream? Uh, yes. They want to know what are some things that job seekers can do to make their resume stand out to you? Anyone want to touch on that? <laughs> Well, I would say that um, the the biggest thing that uh, that I don't want to see <laughs> is I don't want to see artsy craftsy. I don't want pictures with the resume. I want uh, yes, I want to differentiate myself, but I I want don't try the the resume is to get an interview, not to get a job. So the idea is is leave just enough to get someone's interest so that they will speak with you because if you tell them everything on the resume there's nothing to talk about if you do get an interview so i i would say very clean and simple and short uh, i have 54 years experience i think when i sent you my vitae it was page and a half too so if I can add to that, I would just um, annex on to something we talked about earlier is don't embellish anything on your resume. You know, if you did not complete a degree, then, then state, state that. Mm -hmm. um, if you uh, were in a respective role and you were responsible for managing a respective task, but you were not the manager of that task, then, you know, be clear and concise about the things that you did and the role that you played. I completely agree. Jessica, do you have anything to add? Uh, just to try to keep it simple, I think they, they already uh, knocked it out of the park, but keep it short. No recruiter is going to spend uh, five minutes scrolling through five pages of resume. That's not, not in today's world. So, so keep it short. And one thing I always like to uh, share is people tend to uh, list job responsibilities under each uh, function they had, and, th and that is great. But I'll always uh, try to add a result, maybe a project that you uh, have been part of, but not only mention your job duties and responsibilities, but also try to mention, hey, I was responsible for this project that was uh came up with a reduction of x amount of dollars or improve the company in this and this way maybe a couple of bullet points uh, in the function that at least to me means more than you say i was i had to export export this report right 
the day to day task is good. We know that you have that uh, skill, but uh, to me, it speaks louder a project, a savings that you're able to contribute to the organization. I think that's a good point to try to uh, get a little bit of attention. Perfect. Well, thank you for sharing. Liz, do we have any other questions that have came through? Uh, no, but just kind of on that same topic, I know um, Ed mentioned the, you know, drawings or the stuff to make the, the resume virtually pleasing. Is there anything else that kind of makes a resume like an automatic, you know, kind of put it in the no pile? Is there anything else you really should avoid? You know, if I could jump in, I would say make it, you know, we, we have a tendency to write chronologically. And I would say write more functionally. If you're going for a job that's sales and you have sales experience, don't have it the third or fourth job, even though you may not have had it for three years or four years or five years. That's number one, because you're going to, when I'm looking at that resume, very much the same as Michelle said, I'm going to spend a good 15, 20 seconds. And if it doesn't click, it goes in the pile because I got a hundred more to look at. So um, if it's a job in sales, it starts with sales. If it's a job in engineering, it starts with engineering. And you, you play that and, and actually put the resume together that way, not by date chronologically. So do it by experience. Now, it's different if you're a new college, if you're going for an uh, entry-level position out of college, then we're going to talk about education. All that other experience that you had is, for the most part, it, it's great that you had it, list that you had a job, and that's it, nothing else. Um, uh, because now you're going to go on the education and your experience in college. So those are, to me, those, as far as looking at resumes, it's hard to get across that hurdle. You know, I, I've picked up a lot of routines and taught my students a lot of ways to get around it. And I'm sure Michelle and Dr. Goodwin have seen some really crazy things to get to a to a, an HR, you know, hiring manager, et cetera. But it works. So, you know, be creative, be innovative. If I can annex on, I'll share a unique experience. Um, I will never forget this. Um, I received a big FedEx package in my office and the box was full of hay, okay? And I said, who in the world sent me this? And as I began to dig open in the box, it had an envelope in it and it had the resume and it had a needle on it. And it said, hey, you, I know you've been looking for a great salesperson. Now you found the needle in a haystack. Now I don't remember that person's name, but I'm pretty sure we hired them. <laughs> because what a unique way. Now I'm not suggesting you do that for every organization, but that was definitely a very unique way of getting a resume to the attention of, of the recruiter. As well as, you know, don't be afraid to bold out some of your key accomplishments on your resume as well. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that story because I was wondering where it was gonna where it was gonna go. <laughs> well, you, you know the interesting thing on that is when you get the mail and all of us are the same way, and you've got a FedEx envelope or you've got a UPS priority envelope, what do you open first? Think about that. That's the, that's what you're gonna open first. You're 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 gonna look at that and go, wow, I wonder what's in that. And at primacy is very, very important, especially when you sit down and you start going through resumes. Uh, that first one has a higher chance than the last one on the pile. I completely agree. Well, thank you for sharing, everyone. I love this conversation. It was very informative. Do you have any closing thoughts that you would like to share to our audience? Jessica? <laughs> no, I just wanted to thank the opportunity. Uh, thank you guys for putting this together. I think it's a great, um, a great chance to obviously get to virtually meet my colleagues, and also hopefully this was um, uh, helpful for for whoever is is watching and is, is seeking opportunities. I think it's there's a lot out there. There's a lot of of, of tips and tricks. Ultimately, be true to yourself. Uh, be persistent and the right thing will for sure come. So 
do your homework, do your part, and and obviously the the universe will do the rest for sure. <laughs> yes, most definitely. Ed, Dr. Goodwin, do you have any closing thoughts you would like to share? Yes, I would just um, annex on to what Jessica said. I really believe that what you give out to the universe, you will get back. So be the type of person that people want to work with. It doesn't matter how smart you are or how brilliant you are at your, in your field if nobody wants to work next to you. So, you know, work on yourself and become a lifelong learner. And the rest will come if you're giving positive things out to the universe and you're investing in yourself and you're the type of people that people encounter and they say, wow, you know, they're a great joy. Let me see what I can find in my organization for them. Then you will land your next great opportunity, even if your resume is not perfect and even if you don't have the skill set to the highest level. You know, you want to make sure that you are becoming the type of person that others want to work side by side with. Perfect. Thank you. We, you know, I think one of the most difficult things for applicants is the fact that, well, I sent a resume two weeks ago. What should I do? And they said, well, you're already a week late. Um, what you need to do is establish a pattern where you contact that employer. Well, I don't want to bug the employer. I said, bug them because all they're going to, if this is no, it's going to be no, whether you bug them or not. And I can go back for the 40 years that I've been involved in hiring and I have never kicked out a client for being persistent as long as uh, they were professional in their consistency. Okay. Not any, not being rude, not whatever, but just being consistent. In fact, they probably increase their odds. So I would tell my students all the time, don't worry about it. Call them. If it's every Tuesday at 11 o'clock every week till they tell you no, do it. And I said, if the recruiter or the hiring manager, whoever doesn't want to talk to you, and they'll tell you, they'll say, don't call them. And then at that point in time, you want to honor what they say. But if they haven't told you that, keep going, keep scratching. Yes, thank you. Well, Liz, do we have any questions that have came up? That was it. Several people thanking our panel, several people saying they got really good pieces of advice from you all. So thank you for that. Yes, thank you all so much for sharing your expertise because these are definitely trying times and y'all have a wealth of knowledge. And I appreciate y'all for sharing. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and close out. Um, I just want to thank our panelists for taking the time out their day to connect with us and share their resources. And also too, I wanna thank everyone for tuning in to our third Lunch and Learn. I hope the series has been helpful, informative, and please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions that you may have that may come up that we can help you with. And look forward to our next discussion in September. Well, yes, September, I'm sorry, I'm losing my track of months. <laughs> Our next Lunch and Learn in September, stay tuned to that. We'll have something out soon about that. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye.